Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations, Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as um, simple you know, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, Determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Back Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders, we're just longtime fans who love. Talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 389 of Rams Up. Started putting together some realistic draft scenarios. Are the Rams going to trade up? The Rams going to stay put? Should the Rams move back? I ran a couple of informal mock drafts, experimenting with what it would take to move up, what it would cost the Rams, and what players might be available there. And I also laid out the players I would be willing to trade up for. That's coming up here. Players I'm not interested in trading up for. Players I am interested in trading up for. Who might be there at 19 without trading up, and so on. Check it out coming up here in a second. Interesting news item. After Mike Evans signed his new contract with the Bucks, two years, taking him out of the free agent market, it was noted that the Rams were one of a number of teams interested in signing him. And at first I thought, seems like a luxury to me to add Mike Evans, but perhaps this is an indication of how the Rams feel about Cooper Cup and his long-term health. You know, I hate to even talk about it, don't want to discuss it really, but the reality is he has struggled over the last couple of years with injuries, his whole career really. How much more gas does he have in the tank? Hey, hopefully he comes back 100% this year and has another incredible season like he did that Super Bowl season. But the Rams offense is dependent, highly dependent on having two plus highly productive receivers And that's what we have right now if Cooper Cup is healthy. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, the plus being Demarcus Robinson. But if one of them can't go, where would that leave the Rams offense? And that is why pursuing Mike Evans might have made some sense. And it might also be an indication, and we're going to talk about this in our segment coming up, 
Weatherins might be keenly interested in drafting Rome Adunze. Before we get to that segment, episode 389, I'm going to talk about someone who wore number 89. Last episode, I talked about a guy that was one of the fastest Rams ever, Eddie Kennison. He wore number 88. This episode, there's another guy, man, it's probably between these two, who is the fastest Ram ever. Kennison was an All-American sprinter from LSU, ran the 40 and 4.28. But what about our number 89, Ron Brown, also a track star, ran the second leg in the 4x100 meters relay team that won the gold medal that was at the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. They set a world record of 37.83 seconds. Brown went on to join the Rams, caught 23 passes in 1984 for 478 yards. This was right after the Olympics. Scored four touchdowns, but he was actually better known for his kick returning. Finished his Ram career with 3,918 yards returning kicks, and that leads the Rams all time. Had four TDs. He also had 13 receiving TDs as a Ram. He's my number 89 for the Los Angeles Rams, and probably the fastest Ram ever. Sorry, Eddie. After the six mock drafts we've hosted on the YouTube channel and on the podcast and watching these combine performances and reviewing updated rankings of all these players, thought this would be a good time to take a step back and consider what the Rams might really do with those first two picks. So this is what I did. I pulled up Daniel Jeremiah's top 50 players, and then I weighed that against draft tech's rankings. My draft tech rankings are actually a little bit outdated, but I don't think it matters for this exercise. And then I looked at the Rams' first two picks, number 19 and number 52 overall, and I asked this question. And making the assumption that these players are going to go pretty much where Daniel Jeremiah has them slated. Hey, this is an exact science. That's the best we can do right now. I divided these players, top 60 or so players, into five categories. The first category is the five players that are going to be out of the Rams' reach at number 19. All of them very good players, but players that I don't think the Rams should have any interest in trading up for. Now, three of them are quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. They're all going to go in the top 10 for sure. Possibly could go one, two, three, possibly all in the top five, but you get the idea. It would take a lot of ammunition to move up and grab one of those guys. And Rams may have that ammunition. I just don't think it's a smart move. Hey, I'd love to have Caleb Williams on my team. I'd love to have Drake May as our next franchise quarterback, Jaden Daniels as well but not the right move this year. And this is no revelation to Ram fans. I'm pretty sure you're all in 100% agreement with me on this. I know you all love Caleb Williams, but not the move this year. And the other two guys, the tight end, Brock Bowers, you know, if he slid to 15 or 16, do you really want the Rams trading up to grab him? I don't think he's going to be there at 19. Maybe that's one flaw in this is where these guys really are going to go. But again, using Daniel Jeremiah's rankings, he will be long gone by 19. If he's there at 14, do we trade up for him? I don't think so. That wouldn't excite me. And the other one is edge rusher Dallas Turner. He's the 11th ranked player in Daniel Jeremiah's rankings. Rams would have to give up some real draft capital to go up and get him. And I just don't think he's worth it. Going to be a good player little undersized for my liking, though. But those are the five guys that are out of the Rams' reach. I don't think they should give any consideration to moving up for. In the next group, seven players that, you know what? If the Rams could figure it out, I would be okay if they traded up for. Three of them are wide receivers. Marvin Harrison, Rome Adunze, and Malik Neighbors. Now, Daniel Jeremiah has these three receivers ranked two, three, and four, respectively. But you know these quarterbacks are going to go. There's some offensive linemen that are going to be targeted and some edge rushers. So these guys are not going to go 2-3-4, but they are going to go extremely high. Worth taking a look at Daniel Jeremiah's most recent mock draft. Where did he have these guys go? He had Harrison going third, 
neighbors fourth and Odunze ninth. So in that scenario, Rams move up from 19 to nine. How much would they have to give up? And then there's the three offensive linemen, Joe Alt, Talisi Fuaga, and Olu Fashanu. Again, might be pretty expensive, but if the Rams could figure it out, add our future left tackle to this team, I'd be on board with that. Again, got to weigh how costly it's going to be, but still, I'd be pretty excited for any one of these three guys. And the last guy in this group, Terion Arnold, getting a lot of love now, looked great at the combine. I know the Rams don't care about that, but I think he's established himself as the number one cornerback in a pretty good group at the top of the draft. I'm thinking he slips into the teens, hopefully, and it wouldn't be too costly to go up and get him. Same with Fuaga. Hopefully neither of them would cost that much draft capital for the Rams to move up and grab. Jeremiah, by the way, had Arnold going 13th overall and Fuaga 10th. So not unrealistic for the Rams to be able to trade up for one of those guys. Joe Alt's there, but you know what? Another flaw in this system. Yeah, trade up and go get Joe Alt, but if it's going to cost you less to go up and get Fuaga, that would be the move. And again, the other part of this is who they have to trade with. There are some teams that probably aren't interested in trading with the Rams, teams like the Arizona Cardinals. But there are two teams at the top of the draft that would be taking phone calls from the Rams in a heartbeat. The Patriots at number three, they're a team that's always looking to trade back. Man, that'd be really expensive to get up to number three. But how about the Atlanta Falcons at number eight? Raheem Morris and Sean McVay probably going to be on the phone a lot, I'm guessing. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you're here as in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not as uh, simple as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened up so many more doors. The show is called The The Deal. Deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. So we got five we would not trade up for because it's just too expensive or not really worth the squeeze, as they say. And then seven players that I would consider trading up for not going to drop to number 19. At least I don't think so. And then there are seven players, if they're available at 19, I would grab. Wouldn't move up for them, but if they're there, I'd take them or at least give it strong consideration. Two of them offensive linemen, J.C. Latham and Troy Watanu. Those aren't necessarily my favorite players at this spot, but I would be behind the selection. Defensive lineman Byron Murphy the second played alongside the big defensive tackle Sweat there at Texas. And then we have two edge rushers, Jared Verse and Latu Latu. What worries me about Latu is the medicals on him. He had a significant injury a while back. Got to make sure he's 100%. And then we have the cornerback, Quinion Mitchell, established himself as a top five cornerback at the Senior Bowl. And then the linebacker, Edrin Cooper, moving up in the draft. And a lot of people getting more and more excited about him. But he might belong in a later group here, to be honest with you. Players that I would trade up for from 52. We'll get to that group here in a second. But Cooper, alongside Ernest Jones, may end up comparing favorably to those two linebackers up there in Santa Clara. Now, 
Six players I'm passing on at number 19 if they're there. Byron Thomas Jr., the wide receiver. Route running is an issue with him. Keon Coleman, I know he flashed at the combine in a lot of ways. I don't think he's a good fit for this offense, though. I think we can find wide receivers that are better fits later in the draft. Amarius Mims, the tackle, but unfortunately, I think he's pegged as a right tackle only. And then the three quarterbacks I'm passing on at number 19, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix. Michael Penix, probably not in the conversation here at number 19, but I included him because it's very possible. There are people out there thinking maybe the Rams should draft him at number 19. I say emphatically no. I'm not taking him at 52 either, actually. So same result. So there are six players I'm passing on at number 19. So we've made our pick at number 19. Are there players I would trade up from 52 for? Yeah, there's a few. Three cornerbacks. If they slip past number 19 and continue to drop, Enos Rakestraw, Kamari Lassiter, and Nate Wiggins, three very good cornerbacks. And I'd also move up for the edge rusher, Chop Robinson from Penn State. Now, a lot of people are thinking he's going to go much earlier, but I'm basing this on Daniel Jeremiah's rankings. He has Robinson at number 24 overall. And Jackson Powers Johnson, an interior offensive lineman from Oregon. And a lot of you are probably saying, well, wait a minute. You're going to trade up from 52. You'd probably just take him at number 19. Well, the reason I have him here, because Daniel Jeremiah has him at number 29. So yes, I probably would be okay with the Rams taking him at number 19. But for this exercise, he would likely last past number 19. Rams take a different player. Do they move up from 52 to the late first round, early second round? to pick Jackson Powers Johnson, and the answer is absolutely yes. And the last guy I would move up for in this group, I keep on pounding the table for this guy, Lad McConkey, the wide receiver. You want to see me jump into a swimming pool after this guy is picked, I may put that on the YouTube channel. If he's there early in the second round, if he's there around 40 or 41, 42, and he very well could be, move up and grab him. To wrap this up, I put this to the test. I went on the NFL mock draft database and I ran two scenarios. Scenario number one, the Rams trade up to the number eight pick owned by the Falcons. So the Rams give up the 19th pick for the eighth pick. And they also get the Falcons 110th pick overall, that fourth round pick. And I've been saying repeatedly, Rams have to find a way into the fourth round. The Rams obviously had to give something else up. Well, they gave up their first round pick next year, but they got the Falcons' second round pick back. So quick summary, Rams give up their first round pick next year, get the Falcons' second round pick next year. They also get the Falcons' fourth round pick this year, and the Rams switch with the Falcons, the eighth and 19th pick. And in this scenario... When the Rams pick at number eight, there's a bunch of really good players available. Roma Dunze, Dallas Turner, Latou, the edge rusher, Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins, and Talisi Fuaga. It's almost too much available at that point. Suggests that maybe the Rams don't have to move up to number eight to get a player they like. That's probably what they need to do to have a shot at Dunze, though. And the upside of this is, in giving up next year's first round pick, For the Falcons' second round pick, think about it. Rams are giving up the 32nd pick in the draft, right, if all goes well. Think about that for a second. The second scenario, probably a little more likely, the Rams trade with the Denver Broncos. They get the Broncos' 12th pick, and they give up their 19th pick, the third round pick, number 100 overall. That's that comp pick for Raheem Morris. And they also give up their 2025 third round pick. I kind of like this one a little bit more. And in this scenario, Odunze was gone, but they were able to draft Terrion Arnold, the cornerback. And I played this draft all the way out. It was a pretty good draft. In the second round, they picked up Edgerin Cooper, the linebacker out of Texas A&M. So they can pair him up with Ernest Jones. We've talked about this. And then they made another trade. Traded back with the Bills from the 83rd pick to the 99th pick and picked up a 4th round pick, a 6th round pick, and 
a sixth round pick next year. The key here was getting into the fourth round while only moving back 16 spots. And moving back 16 spots, they were able to pick up a pretty darn good interior offensive lineman, Cedric Van Pran, out of Georgia. And with that 129th pick overall, the fourth round pick, they received in that trade with the Bills, McKinley Jackson, the defensive lineman out of Texas A&M. All of these names have popped up in a variety of our mock drafts that we've run here. And 153 overall, Paul Wally is going to be thrilled. Sione Vaki, the safety. 154 overall, back-to-back picks here. Christian Jones, offensive tackle out of Texas. This is the one guy in this draft I'm not really familiar with. He was the highest rated tackle on the board at this point. The 177th pick, Isaiah Davis, the running back out of South Dakota State. This is a guy Paul Wally has also been pumping up as well as our 191st pick, Jordan Travis, the developmental quarterback out of Florida State. Still have four picks left. Picked up Jalex Hunt, the edge rusher out of Houston Baptist. Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint, the wide receiver out of Georgia. And 217 overall. Hey, you're not going to like it, but I took Joshua Cardi, the kicker out of Stanford. And our last pick, The one position we haven't hit yet here, A.J. Barner, the tight end out of Michigan, the highest rated tight end on the board. Pretty much covered all the bases. How did I feel about this draft when we're done? Well, we didn't get one of the top interior offensive linemen, and we didn't get even a tier two wide receiver. But man, we really improved this defense with Arnold, Cooper, and McKinley Jackson, as well as Vaki. Man, added some studs to the defense. Just a test here, just an experiment. What might happen if the Rams traded up a little bit or a lot and what they might have to give up? And I'm thinking it's more and more likely that the Rams move up in this draft and pick up one of these guys they really like. I'm thinking a cornerback or a wide receiver. I think the interior offensive lineman they like, a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson, will be there at 19. I certainly hope so. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.